Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us at this, a first MedCom's job webinar. Um, uh, my name is Peter Llewellyn. I run a MedCom's networking activity, which is a global community activity for people in and around MedCom's, by which I mean medical communications, education, and publishing. Um, and I've been doing that for a number of years, and out of that activity, uh, we've developed um, a range of services and information um, services, of one sort or another, for people who would like to get into MedCom's. Um, we call it firstmedcomsjob.com. There are careers guides, there's information, there's webinars, there's audio, there's all sorts of things um, at the website. And we also run a whole load of, of meetings, very good meetings we had one. Um, but the, the, the open meetings that we run, very good if you can get to them because you meet the people in real life. We might have 50 odd medcoms people there, 14 agencies, whatever. Um, but not everyone can get there. Um, and I'm very keen that these uh, Zoom meetings um, give us a, uh, another option and a way of reaching more people. And it's a way of reaching, uh, of talking about individual topics maybe. So today, I'm joined by Katie Johnson from Ashfield, and we're gonna talk about um, uh, the, the Allegro program for medical, uh, for associate medical writers. So we can provide a program, talking very specifically about a topic, um, and um, you're all very welcome to join in and, um, and learn something. And very much this is built around your Q&A. So everybody that's joining in, please get ready with your questions. However, today, um, we're going to start with Katie, and I'm going to start by asking Katie to introduce herself, and she will uh, talk you through a little presentation before we then get to the Q&A. So, Katie, over to you. Thanks, Peter. So, I'm Katie Johnson. I'm part of the talent acquisition team at Ashfield Healthcare Communications. Um, probably been in the company about two and a half years, and have started focusing on the associate medical writer recruitment. So I'm your main point of contact for getting into associate medical writer roles. What I'm going to do on this um, Zoom meeting is do a short presentation to give you an overview briefly about Ashfield as an organisation and um, focus in on the Allegro programme to talk about how that fits in in the context of the wider business, why we came up with the Allegro program, um, how the program actually runs over the 12 months, and then I'll dig a bit deeper into the recruitment process for it, how we do that side of things as well. Um, but I'll keep that quite brief and put the questions out to you guys. If there's anything that you think of that you want to ask during the presentation, feel free to um, put it in the question box, but I'll save them all until the end and see what we get in um, to begin with. So if you just bear with me a second, I will share my screen with you. And start a brief presentation. So, um, what I'll do is just give a bit of a background about Ashfield Healthcare. Um, we're one of the larger group of communications agencies um, dealing with different pharmaceutical companies throughout different stages in a drug development cycle. Um, we are predominantly um, Macclesfield based but we've got people all over the um, world essentially. We in the healthcare communications division um, have about 1,200 people across our locations. Um, various backgrounds. We in our agencies have kind of two main areas, um, which I'll explain later on, um, which are like client services and medical writing and streams. So within that collection of agencies, we've got people with all kinds of backgrounds. They'll have come from clinical practice, from academia, and also have kind of healthcare communications experience as well. In the business currently, there's about 90% of people who have got um, postdoctoral degrees. Um, however, with our newbies coming into the organization, um, that shift has changed somewhat and we've got people from a whole spectrum from undergrads to um, researchers who are looking for a career change. So um, across the country and the world then, we have the majority of our workers are in the UK um, and the US. So locations that we run the Allegro programme out of um, and the rotations are 
not applicable to all of the offices that we have. So we run the eight weeks of training out of the central Macclesfield office. Um, it's in our old mill building and we've created a learning zone where we're um, desks solely allocated to those in Allegro. So that's why we have the training sessions in that first eight weeks there. Um, we then are able to offer the rotations out to our other locations with multiple agencies in that. So for now, um, we've got people on the Allegro programme in Macclesfield, London, Glasgow, and our um, Whitney office in Oxfordshire. Um, so that's kind of the main location that we focus in on for training our associate medical writers. Once you're up and running and in, um, the organisation is a fully fledged medical writer, and these office locations are then kind of broadened out to wherever your need of location might need to be. So within the group, um, we do have a collection of Medicoms agencies that are all broadly doing the same thing. So creating content for farm clients across three main areas. Um, within each agency, um, you'll see different clients that they work with. You'll see different therapy areas um, and you'll also see different account types. So within the account types, there will tend to be kind of either your publication focused work or your uh, medical education meetings and events type work. Um, and you'll know if you've ever visited Peter's website or been to any of the first Medcoms events, within the industry, every single medical writer position um, can be quite varied and different to the next. It all boils down to what type of writing you um, have on your account, what the focus is, who are the audiences that the messages are going out to. Um, so it's really worth understanding that um, a, medical, a medical writing role can look actually quite different depending on the type of work you're writing on. Um, so this um, slide just goes into a bit more detail about the breadth of support that we are able to provide to the pharma industry. Um, and we'll cover that throughout the whole um, agency so some of the digital and creative things that we do will work in conjunction with our digital and creative agency um, with our events and um, specialized teams so really gives you an, an idea of the various types of work that you could be doing as part of your entry-level associate medical writer position and further on throughout your career um, we use insights to drive a product successfully through its life cycle. So to give that a bit more real life meaning, um, a drug can take anywhere kind of between five and 10 years to get from creation to being on the market. And as a medical communications agency, we're all about bridging the gap of that knowledge. So taking the information that's coming out at a very high scientific level, and creating communication strategies and pieces that can help um, the pharma companies navigate their way through that process. And then when products are coming onto the market, how will that affect patients? What communication um, pieces would need to be put together throughout the various cycles of um, the drug life cycle? So within a medical communication, agency although on this um, session we'll mainly be focusing on um, associate medical writers um, it is worthwhile keeping in mind that if you are thinking about joining medcoms and aren't necessarily aware of the other roles available within a medcoms agency um, we have two clear tracks of roles um, so that's medical and scientific services and client services within that um, the typical career paths are very clear and established and there's lots of support to get you from your um, role into the next promotion level. Um, within Ashfield, we've got very much a culture of always working towards that next level. What exposure can you have on accounts? What work can you be doing to move forward with that? Um, and as a medical writer coming into the organisation, it's all about getting a breadth of experience in different areas to get to that medical writer level and above that. So 
that forms a large basis around why we created the Allegro programme. Um, because medical writer roles can be quite different, um, what we were finding within the various agencies within Ashfield, depending on what type of account you were working on, um, how varied the projects were, people were coming into the business and progressing at different rates or not necessarily having such a varied mix in their one single account. So um, that feeds into a lot why we've chosen to do the placements in a couple of different agencies, um, which I'll come on to. But in essence, um, there's strong and clear um, progression paths to promotions within the business. What we're looking for in an associate medical writer then, um, when we run our assessment centres to recruit for our associate medical writers, we are in essence looking out for all of these skills to be displayed as part of the day. Um, long gone are the days where medical writers would purely come in and churn out manuscripts, abstracts. It's a real collective effort um, every single time a brief comes into the business and is worked on by associate medical writers, medical writers, senior medical writers, it goes through to editorial assistants and the digital and creative team. Um, so it's a big collaborative effort. Um, and within that, what we really look for in our associate medical writers is to come and be part of that team. Um, a lot of it comes down to being able to communicate well with others, um, to have a passion for science and really enjoy getting into that scientific mind space where you're looking at things with incredible attention to detail. Um, there's lots of deadlines. Projects will come and go regularly and you'll always have a cycle of um, multiple projects that you'll be dipping in and out of at any one time. Um, it's a deadline oriented business so Publication works will often have deadlines as to submissions as well as when there's an event coming up um, the event will go ahead on that day and everything has to be geared up and then set um, and ready for that date itself. So um, these are some of the real attributes that we look for within our medical writers. Um, um, and alongside that we really do live by our values here at Ashfield. So, we do look out to see ways that you can display those attributes. So looking out for your energy and your partnership and how you come across and would fit culturally within the business. Whilst ever our individual agencies tend to have their own feel to them, they'll be on different floors, different locations, um, doing different work, but generally speaking, everyone is tied together by these values across Ashfield. So I'll move on to the Allegro programme um, to go into more detail. We created the Allegro programme um, coming up to 12 months ago and really what we were wanting to do is to capitalise on the training opportunities that we already have within the business to create a more standardised and formal training programme for associates coming into the business. Historically, we would recruit um, associates through our assessment centre and you would go into one of our agencies and that would be your home. What we were finding is that some of our agencies, whilst they're all full service agencies, will maybe have a 70% focus on publications work and lesser on meetings. Some may have the reverse of that and be very meetings heavy with not much publications focusing um, on their projects. So people at an entry level associate medical writer role were getting different levels of exposure to um, account types and therapy areas. And what we thought, given the fact that um, within the group we're fairly fluid on how you can move around through agencies to go after the new work that you were keen to get um, experience in was to create something where you receive training up front as well as going into a couple of different agencies to really get an in-depth exposure in those different account types. So how the program is set up is it's a 12-month accelerated learning program so we would recruit 
you into the business as a single cohort. On each Allegro intake, we take 15 new associate medical writers, um, and you'll all start in your own group in the dedicated training centre. So what that really gives you up front is a network of people that you are in a safe learning environment with. Um, rather than entering an agency where you're just you know, chucked in at the deep end and all the medical writers are so busy and there's no one to ask questions with, this environment is really giving you um, the opportunity to ask all the questions that you might have. You will receive stand, um, like formal training such as your compliance, uh, um, learning about how pharmaceutical industries work to kind of give you the skills that you would need to be a writer and alongside that we have um, we you're all we um, experience and tasks to write so you'll get um, briefs of abstracts posters presentations that you'll be writing um, but those won't be going out to clients immediately they'll be reviewed by your line manager to feed back on and um, to give you pointers of what's gone well and what needs improvement so that by the time you're in the agency rotations um, when a brief comes in and it's okay right so we need an abstract doing in a week you might not have worked on that therapy area with that team or client before but at least you've got the foundation of okay so I know how I would begin this task and I know what needs to go into this work um, so that's how the, the first eight weeks work. Um, within the rotations then, and just touching back on the locations, that first eight weeks is um, in Macclesfield, but after that point, if you do have a, a preference to be based in one of our other offices that we can host um, Allegro Associate Medical Writers in, we can move you to one of those offices we would not ever move you against your will, kind of ship you from London to Glasgow or move you around. It is kind of very um, what your preference is. So that gives a little bit more context around the programme. At the end of the 12 months, um, you will be kind of assessing where you've um, come from, where you're at now to reach that medical writer level. So. It's a, it's a training program, so from the very first day you are a permanent member of employee uh, of Ashfield, sorry, you will have your standard probationary period as usual, kind of midway through that year, and at the end of the 12 months, it's likely that you'll go into one of the agencies that you've spent time in, so you already know the teams and the account types. Um, there is no formal reapplication or you pass fail kind of element to it, and you get booted out it's very much we just kind of find a long-term home for you in one of the agencies um, so yeah it takes you from the associate medical writer to medical writer and um, within the program then I'll, I'll talk about the recruitment process in a bit more detail um, we've been running assessment centers for coming up to three years almost and um, they work really well for us and because we've got um, those values that overarch the whole organisation, it's much easier to look for somebody with an Ashfield fit um, rather than a specific agency culture fit. Um, so all in all, our um, assessment centres have remained largely the same. We change them depending on where our feedback is, but um, it's a one day event and it, it's invite only, you would be invited along to the day. We do um, a medical writing task and um, test to assess your general writing ability. Um, that is important as part of becoming a medical writer to have those basic skills. Um, and then what we also do is a couple of group exercises, which really hark back to the skills that we're looking for and attributes where we'd be looking at your teamwork, your communication skills, your how you've worked with the group. We do a networking lunch session where we get current people on the programme um, to come and talk in more detail about their experiences so far. A lot of the guys that we've recruited into the business have been in exactly your position. Um, they know what it's like to have lots of applications on the go, to be juggling different um, deadlines and writing tests, to maybe still be finishing off their degrees. or um, So they are really good to hit their brains about how they transitioned from academia to the industry, 
um, what they've enjoyed, what they weren't expecting to find out that they have picked up in their position. Um, and in the afternoon, we would do a competency-based interview. So that's looking along um, the STAR method, if you've heard of that before. Um, so that digs a bit deeper into you as a person and what your transferable skills are and how they can be brought in and utilised in part of the position. Um, it's worth noting as well that I'll um, cover off that to apply, you would need to submit a CV and cover letter. Um, and what we're looking out for in the cover letter, there's kind of questions about how useful they are, but really what we're looking to see is um, what you enjoy doing, what motivated you to become a medical writer, and really why you think you'd like to be part of the programme and how that would um, suit your needs. So that's what we look out for in um, the cover letter, and then obviously your CV, as long as you've got a two on or above in a life sciences degree, that's kind of the baseline of what we look for. Um, so that covers kind of the overview a bit more about Ashfield, the Allegro programme and the assessment centres. I think what it might be best to do is to just open it out to questions and see if anybody you know, has got anything from um, here that they'd like to talk about in more detail um, or anything they'd like me to clarify and we can kind of kick it off there. Um, how does that sound with you, Peter? Yeah, no, that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Katie. That was quite comprehensive. Um, so very much so now we're um, inviting people to ask questions. Um, just to remind everybody, um, you should have a couple of button, buttons at the bottom of your screen. One says chat. Uh, you can chat either sending a message to the panelists and attendees or just the panelists. Um, you should also have, but apparently sometimes people don't always have, uh, you should also have a Q&A button. Um, and if you, um, if you use the Q&A button, those questions are uh, seen by everybody or should be seen by everybody. So we've had a few people going hi and hello, which is great, but um, let's bring in a few of the questions now, okay? Uh, can I just uh, cover up a couple of things, um, Katie, while we're waiting to see if anyone's got uh, those questions? Um, yes. One question, an obvious question, some of this is a bit obvious, I suppose, but we, we're focusing in on, on Allegro, which is a programme for associate medical writers. Um, just out of interest, um, is there a plan to do a similar programme for the client services side, account management side? At the moment, we've not got a, a formal plan. It's something that we've got in the back of our minds, should we need to. Um, I think the thing with the associate medical writer role well is that we're always having people um, promoted up to the next level and there's always a need, whereas some of the client services roles might um, come around through a new business win and a pitch and some of those roles are a bit more reactive in how we recruit for those. Um, and they're opened up to all of our locations. Um, there's kind of client services dotted around in all of our offices. So it's something we might look at in the future, but there's no immediate plans for now. Okay. Um, and just picking up on a couple of questions that are coming in in terms of um, the starting dates and so on, just, just clarify mm -hmm. this rather than, um, I mean, in terms of the generals. So this is a rolling program. Um, you're, you've got regular assessment dates. You start the, um, the program and you're doing three or four type uh, recruitment processes a year. Is that about a summary? Yeah, that's correct. So we tend to run our assessment centres ideally three months ahead of the intake start date. So it gives time for people to relocate, to get all the current contracts and things sorted. Um, so this one that we are recruiting for in November to start in January um, will be the fourth one since our first intake in January. So it's working out kind of three, four intakes a year. Okay, and um, just just a quick, I just remember this question being asked last time when we, we ran this meeting. Um, they, you've said, and you have said clearly, so, but let's clarify, you basically have to be in Maxfield for eight weeks, yeah? Yeah. Um, to start this program that's not that's not in dispute so you can't do this remotely you can't be doing this in other locations your first eight weeks is in Macclesfield just yeah. a little bit just touch on um, because it did come up last time it seems a sensible thing what uh, how helpful are you to people coming to Macclesfield for those eight weeks I think um, will, will you you say a few words about the the, um, the, 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 the offer there yeah, I think in terms of if you were relocating um, for those eight weeks there's plenty of options to find something short term. We are at the moment unable to provide kind of any kind of support in housing or um, finding places specifically for you. So that would, the onus would be on you, um, but taking the role to sort something out for those eight weeks. 
Yeah, interestingly, as I was asking that question, we had a couple of questions coming in there, um, but that's very clear then. So you have to come to Maxfield and essentially you yeah, help your supporters, but it's down to you to, to sort your accommodation out. Um, and the distance training programme doesn't apply. So basically what we're talking about here with Allegro is coming into Maxfield um, to do an eight-week training programme. Um, we've got a question there about the numbers of PhD students. Um, I think you said uh, fairly clearly that as long as you have a, a, a 2-1 first degree, life sciences you're sort of eligible um, there's a there's a, always discussion about phd postgrad whatever in and around medcoms uh, just give us a sense of how valuable is the postgraduate experience what sort of experiences are you looking for? yeah i think the, all education and you know depending on what level you're on it's all really useful to have an insight into the life sciences area i think what it's worth realizing is that unless you've explicitly worked in a medical communications agency before as a medical writer there isn't really a way to bypass that entry level role um, so we get people with all kinds of backgrounds and it helps to have you know, an interest in the science and the writing and then combining those skills um, so yeah it's hard to say we, we really don't have a preference on what kind of degree you have or how much experience you have and um, really what we look out for is that um, drive to want to be part of the program okay. if that plays <laughs> yeah yeah i mean just a, just a little bit of context there i, I think it's worth saying um, this is a, this is a business which does embrace postgraduate qualifications phd postdoc um, and, and one of the comments that's quite often made to me at our meetings and so on is it's nice to find a business that embraces the PhDs. Uh, you know, there, there is life outside the lab sort of thing. If you've got yeah. um, one of the issues that that does basically raise, depending on how far down that line you've got, um, how senior you are and so on is, uh, again, it's maybe worth making the point, which I think you did make, you can't come in at a higher level into the Allegro programme or into, into Ashfield because you are that much older with several postdocs or something under your, under your belt. Basically, the way you recruit is you come in as an associate medical writer, you start at the bottom, how fast you move up is very much down to you and it's probably uncapped and it's basically just as fast as you, know, you can make it happen. But you sort of have to start at the bottom and move up. And there's, there's always a little bit of tension there. Some people go, well, I, you know, I'm very clever, I've written lots of papers, I ought to be coming in higher up. Is, is that a fair summary of the position? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's about the training opportunities as well. It's to ensure and um, promise to our clients that everyone's received the same level of training. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and again, just to tease that one out a little bit more because um, I think people do, for, from academia, you sort of think in terms of I'm at this band and then I, I, I stay in this band until someone dies above me or something and I sort of move up a band or something. This is not the sort of, you know, this sort of agency business is you can move quickly if you put the effort in, if the opportunities come up and so on. It's the question is how do you get started on that programme, yeah? Yeah. Uh, a couple more questions coming in. Uh, is, let's take that one from Sally then. Is the Allegro programme the only route into medcoms? Clearly not because we're only talking about associate medical writers, but just a couple of that one off. So there's obviously another route for the, the account management side. Yeah, for um, either the insights roles or the client services roles, any of those, um, you don't have to join Ashfield explicitly through the Allegro programme. That's purely for associate medical writers. Um, for our other positions, it would be a case of getting in touch, checking the website, seeing what roles are open in your location at the time that you're looking at. Just to cover off one point, I don't actually know the answer to this question. How do you uh, organise sort of editors as opposed to writers? Have you got you know, editors formally sitting there editing for the work that the writers are doing? Yes. Um, are the editors a different group again, like the account management stuff? They're not. Yeah. Not yeah. They it theoretically sit in the medical and scientific services pool, um, but they will be working across multiple accounts. Um, so, yeah, we recruit for those when there's a need um, and they'll do an editorial assistant task and come into the business it's worth saying that if you if your end goal is to become a medical writer you might as well just apply to the Allegro program um, it's beneficial if you were and wanted to if you've got an interest in the editorial side of things or want to explore it before you dedicate 12 months to the program um, but if, if, if it's your goal there's no harm in just applying to the Allegro program directly. Okay, and that makes sense in the context of Ashfield where you've got your program and you're looking at large numbers of people coming in. 
Um, but isn't it? But perhaps there's an important point just saying that there is a there are editors in this system sort of thing. And some people like editing and proofreading and stuff like that. You know, those sorts of people, there are opportunities for you. And it is actually a very good brand grounding for medical writing and so on if, if people decide to have a go at that, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, okay, well, we've got a, a question. Can you give a few examples of what the two five-month rotation periods consist of? So do you want to just explore that one a little bit more? Yeah, so within the group, um, if you take a single medcoms agency they will work or with various clients and various therapy areas but they'll tend to have as, a, as an associate anyway you'll tend to have kind of one main account that you focus on whilst you find your feet um, and if say it's a publications account that might be looking at um, manuscripts abstracts kind of some of the more classic medical writing um, and on the rotation say that would be your first rotation and you would focus in on that style of writing to really stick your teeth into it. Um, on the second five-month rotation, we would then ensure that that was a completely different type of account so that you were covering off all the other styles of writing. So that might be more of your um, ad board symposium, so a bit more creative in terms of the presentation and leaflets that you might need for an event. Um, so really what that gives you at the end of the two lots of five rotations is a sizable amount of time spent focusing on those really quite different writing styles um, so that at the end of it you've got a clearer idea of what you've enjoyed, what you didn't necessarily like so much um, and what kind of area you want to focus in on when you're thinking about your objectives to get from medical writer to senior medical writer. Um, kind of gives you an all-rounded depreciation of how different at the medical writer job can be depending on what agency and account you're on. Okay, um, just, just looking at the questions coming in, we've got a very specific question, we need to be a bit careful about sort of getting too specific a situation, but why not, let's, let's use an example. So I had a two, two undergraduate life science degree in the UK and will complete my UK masters in a week's time, I'd expect to earn a distinction. How do, do I mean, is your two one an absolute? Does something like that start to go well? Yeah, case by case basis and so on. I think no, it for a, a it would need a two one essentially in the life sciences degree, essentially, as just as a starting point. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, so that's fairly clear cut. Um, what sort of uh experience would be helpful before starting the program? Wouldn't that can still be considered without prior experience? So, yeah. We don't expect anybody to have any experience um, per se in writing before applying to the programme. I think if you've ever had a job throughout your degree or held a, um, like a part-time position, it may be something that is client-facing or customer-facing, anything that kind of gives you those broader life skills of dealing with um, deadlines or handling tricky situations or um, on your kind of leisure and hobby side of things if there's anything that um, you like to do creatively we've had people in the past that have had a blog where they've just enjoyed writing and writing about subjects so there's nothing that we really look out for as a prerequisite it's more a case of if you do um, have a well-rounded CV and show that you've worked in teams that you enjoy communicating with others and you enjoy writing Okay, okay. Um, I might as well add my usual couple of points in on those sorts of questions. Um, the, uh, the social media world is such that, um, you know, it's worth being a little bit careful, guys. Uh, remember what you, what you did, um, you know, a year ago after that fun university party and you put up a, a sort of fun, humorous blog or something. Um, you know, part of the process now is they're going to be looking to see what you've done online. And if it's well written and clever and humorous and all this, that can work in your favour. Um, but if it is essentially um, just not very well done, then it can work against you. So think about LinkedIn profiles, academic profiles, blog sites, you know, serious and unserious. Uh, people are looking at what you've done. Um, and stay on the positive side. It can be lots of evidence of how creative you are, how good your writing is and so on. But just be a little bit careful because it is very public. Um, and, and they will now uh, follow up and look at uh, what you've been doing um, we've had a question is that the same I think it's the same question I'm not sure it's the same question from two different people sorry but essentially just to clarify um, 
it's back to your five month, uh, two five month sessions, you're rotating between different agencies in different locations or not necessarily, presumably, but so there's an option there. Not necessarily. So, for example, in our uh, in Macclesfield, we've got three offices that the majority of our agencies have all got a presence in. So, um, for example, our central Macclesfield office, where the training programs held, on every single floor of the office is another one of our agencies. Um, so sometimes your agency move might just be kind of moving up the stairs. Um, it might be if you were looking at different locations, we could sort of sort something out for you in that case but um you've never really been moving any further than kind of the next floor or the local office so we've got two offices in macclesfield which if you drive and it's easy to get to the other office we might do one of your rotations there but um when deciding on which agencies you'll be in for your placement there's a number of things that we'd consider kind of your um preference of location you know how mobile you are to get around um we'd never kind of put you in somewhere where it wasn't going to work out for you yeah so you're not jumping you're not being moved around for a year uh, no willy-nilly as it were and um, a uh, straightforward question here can you answer this one what kind of salary can you expect will this be influenced by your prior, prior experience I forget about that. Well, to bring you in as an associate medical writer, it's kind of the market average of what a med an associate would join at throughout the year and your probation period, you'll have a review then. And then when we're reviewing you at the end of the year to see whether you're at that medical writer promotion, you would then kind of have that salary bump to bring you in line with what a medical writer would be on. Um, so I think as an industry, all the salaries to begin with as an associate are quite standard across the board. So I, I'm, I'm going to answer that one a little bit more specifically. I don't want to put you on the spot there, Katie, but um, in our careers guide, we would be quoting for a medical writer starting 25 to 30K um, as a broad range and sometimes it's a bit less and, and so on. But that's the, you know, that's the sort of context we're talking about. You would, you would be happy saying yeah. that's the context we're talking about. Yeah. It's very difficult being very specific in this environment, but, um, but that seems a generally sort of acceptable number for the industry sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So look, that's um, we're, we're coming up to our half an hour. I think we might slightly over it, and and I think the questions have stopped coming in just at the moment. Um, so could I could I uh, formally, as it were, close this meeting, and 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 say a big thank you to Katie. Um, I'd um, I'd ask everyone to stay online if you can, because we'll do a little poll again and so on. But can I just uh, take this opportunity to say a big thank you to Katie, to everyone for joining in, but for Katie for joining in there. And I will sort of form the closer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. No, thanks for the questions. Some good questions on there.